Hello, this is Dr. Day Storms, and this video is to teach you how to write an organic chemistry lab report. Because starting this very first week, you will be required to have your pre lab report submitted prior to coming to your section of organic chemistry lab. And so, before every week, before you can do your experiment, you need to submit a pre lab report. Then, the week afterwards, unless you're notified otherwise, uh, you are expected to submit a final lab report from the previous week's experiment. And so, first off, I'm going to go over what, uh, what the, the rubric for the final lab report. So, as you can see here, a pre-lab assignment is actually worth 20% of the entire grade for that week. So attendance is 5%, turning in the pre-lab is 20%. You have your work ethic, lab decorum, lab safety, including providing your own lab goggles. They have to be appropriate lab eye protection. Um, they cannot be skiing goggles, which I've had people try to wear in the past. And they cannot be sunglasses. Okay. There are different parts to the lab report. Some parts are required for the pre-lab, some, and then all the parts are required for the final lab report. And I'm going to show you what those examples are in just a moment. There's a background introduction section. And I'll explain what, does, what it means by the spectrum. You have to have references. There's a minimum of five or more acceptable references, one of which must come from a scientific peer-reviewed journal article. Then, of course, we take off for lab report formatting errors, grammatical errors, spelling errors. You have 10% of your data. 20% is your summary or conclusion section. Some people call this the discussion section. And then finally, there's 10% for questions. If the lab report doesn't have any questions that are assigned to it, then usually the extra goes towards your discussion, your summary or conclusions, because that's the most important section of the entire report. Okay, so let's first show you an example of a pre-lab report. So this experiment here has to do with synthesis of isoamyl acetate, which, by the way, is the the smell. It's an it's an ester, and it's the smell of bananas. It's also the pheromone for for honeybees. So for the pre-lab report, you're required to do an introduction. And you want a fairly in-depth introduction. You really should, you really should include a section here that has the the reaction mechanism and what reaction is occurring. Now, in organic chemistry one, for the first half of the semester, or almost the first half of the semester, you're just learning techniques. And so these techniques probably will not have a reaction mechanism or a reaction scheme. So therefore, you won't be expected to know to show a mechanism there or a reaction if you're just learning how to do a technique. However, starting around October sometime, that's when the reaction, when you start actually doing real organic syntheses. Okay, so there's this introduction. Make sure you include the uh, references. Figures and pictures are amazing. They will help your lab report. So you can see this person here has a good page. There's not an a, there's not a, a minimum per se, but you want an in-depth lab report. And then secondly, in order to show that you've actually read what we're doing for that lab that week, you are in, required to include the experimental procedure. Most people do it this way. The vast majority of people really like to do it in the, the columnar format, using different columns, where in one column they type out uh, what it is that they're going to be doing that week, Whereas in the other column, they'll put something in for just the space in here for observations and for their data, which obviously you're not going to have any observations or data yet until after you do the experiment. Okay. 
you don't have to write this out word for word. Some people do just because they can type really fast. Uh, you just have to have enough in order to make sure it makes sense. You're more than welcome to bring your own computers or tablets into the lab. However, it is your responsibility to keep them safe and dry and clean. The school or I will will not take, uh, are not responsible for the upkeep of your own equipment, your own personal computers. And then, of course, you have a reference section. And as you can see here, this person has clearly indicated which is the, the scientific journal article that they used. They didn't use the ACS or AMA formatting. I don't require AMA formatting for the, these lab reports. However, some people, if you're using Zotero or EndNote or some of these to help write your papers, it's easy enough to do. I will tell you for all your real papers for lecture in biochemistry and organic chemistry classes, uh, those are required to have AMA formatting. But you need to indicate what reference is your scientific peer-reviewed scientific journal article. So this is all the that composes the pre-lab report. You should save this in a format that we're able to download and to read. And so the best is usually PDF because that will save it in whatever uh, formatting that, that you have, like however you have it laid out. The other format we can take is Microsoft Word or RTF. And but both of these sometimes between the different platforms and different versions of Word out there can alter the layout of your papers, whereas PDF usually keeps it in, in, intact. Now, unless you're told otherwise, the final lab report, also due in PDF format, preferably, or Microsoft Word format, um, is due the week after you have done the experiment in class. Okay. Now, for example, the week of Thanksgiving, you aren't expected to turn it in during your Thanksgiving break. It would be the week after when you come back. One thing that I hope you notice right off hand is if you wrote a really good introduction for the pre-lab, then you don't have to write anything else for the introduction in the final lab report. Now, some people go ahead and add in more, but you don't have to. Once again, the experimental procedure section is the same unless you make changes while you are actually doing the lab, then you can note those changes. Say, for example, it's not true here, but if instead of 8.5 milliliters, let's say, for example, this person really added 8.7 milliliters, then you would make that change uh, during class if you, if you so wanted to. Notice here, now... This student has included a picture. Pictures are great for observations. Uh, perhaps they've included data. There's no data in this particular step here, but now you are starting to populate that column of your lab report. As we scroll on down, you can see this, this student has added in a considerable amount pictures and data. Uh, if you save this as a PDF, it's really nice because then your pictures are saved in the same formatting. You don't have to worry about things getting lost between different versions. All right. Now, the year that this person did this experiment, we didn't have the IR spectrophotometer yet, but we since then we have bought an IR spectrophotometer, so he or she would have included the spectra as part of their data. Now, they did gas chromatography instead, and so that's going to be down here in the data. Notice we now have a data section, because they actually did the experiment. One important thing here is you need to figure up your percent yield for most of these that have an actual experiment. You, so to do that you have to calculate your theoretical yield, then your actual yield and take your actual yield divided by your theoretical yield times 100 to make it to a percent. Okay, but they've included their data for the data section. Here's their 
gas chromatography instead of using an IR spectrophotometer. All right, notice in that rubric I mentioned that you had to include the NMR spectrum and the IR spectrum for the compounds in your, your lab reports. For you, this won't start probably until October of Organic Chemistry 1. After you've learned how to do the various types of techniques, then you're going to start doing actual organic syntheses. That's when the real fun begins. And so then you would actually include real data as well. But from that point on, you are expected to include an IR spectrum and an NMR spectrum for at least one compound, usually the product or products of your of your lab experiment that week. You can't just include only the spectrum. Please note here this person. They've included the spectrum, and then they explain the spectrum. And the reason why we wait also until October to do this is that you wouldn't have covered NMR yet in the lecture to know how to explain the spectrum until you get to that point. So this is the proton, the proton NMR spectrum for isoamyl acetate, which was the product of this particular experiment. Likewise, this student also included the IR, and again, he or she has explained what the IR means. So for example, they've indicated here the fact that the wave numbers at 2850 to 3000 indicates the stretching of the carbon-hydrogen bonds. Okay. So you would just, which may not make sense to you now, but it will later on in the semester. Finally, you've got the discussion section. This is very, very important, okay? For this discussion section, there are certain things that you need to go over. There's a reason why this is worth at least 20 to 30% of the entire week's lab grade, okay? So, first of all, it does tend to be lengthy because in it you are explaining what you did that week, okay? So... What do you need to know? Okay, so first off, you just briefly describe what you did in the lab that week. Okay? Second, you need to discuss, and this is very important, any changes made or any mistakes that you made. Because we are not perfect. As my mother used to say, there's only one perfect person and we crucified him. Um, we are not perfect, and so you're going to make mistakes. Okay, then discuss how these mistakes affected your anticipated results. This is to show that you understand what's going on in the lab. All right? And then you also want to describe or discuss how you can make this better. how you can improve this. And the reason why is at the in, end of Organic Chemistry 2, you're going to have a comprehensive lab practicum exam that covers everything from both semester of, or, of Organic Chemistry, and the TA and I are not there to help you. You're going to be given a synthesis, and you've got to figure out on your own how to do the, the synthesis. You have to propose your own, and the only help that you really can use is based off of the labs and stuff that we've done throughout the year. So that's why you want to make sure that your discussions are really good in explaining what you did. So briefly go over what you did, discuss any of these mistakes that you make so you don't make them again, explain how they affected your results, and then discuss how you can improve this experiment. Okay, and then finally, you once again, Oh, I forgot. So first off, then you're going to have, if there are questions, I'll have the question section, which once again, you can include pictures, all of this. You've got your, finally you've got your references, 
because you can't plagiarize. These are actual papers, and so if you do plagiarize and you don't correctly cite, you do get turned into the university's um, academic, according to the university's academic dishonesty procedures. And then, of course, don't forget the figure. Some people do a separate... Uh, reference section for the figures, and some people don't. They just include it as part of the the entire um, figure section, like you would in a in a paper. So, for example, perhaps it would be numbers six, seven, and eight versus one through five, and then a separate section for one, two, and three. Hopefully, this has helped explain how to do the pre lab report and the final lab report for an organic chemistry lab and also don't sweat it because practice makes perfect and by the end it won't be too bad at all hopefully <laughs> it'll be fun to to explore organic chemistry throughout this year with you